The center of Israel is Jerusalem, the womb of Israel. In fact, it was a tomb where that became a womb from which we were born from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the matrix of the church. The church began there. Most people have no idea. If I say, what is a matrix? Most of you, some of you may know, but most of you don't. Yet you use the word. The word is used in computer technology and mathematics as well, but in many contexts, what does actually matrix mean? Well, the truth is, we have some matrixes in this room, a good, a good amount of them. Some of you are matrixes. You think a matrix is a science fiction word or a science word. Matrix actually means mother. That's what it means. That's what it means. Divide the word. Matrix, ma, tricks. It's ma. That's what matrix is. It's, um, it means mother. From the Latin word in Rome, they used it. Matrix meant a pregnant, a mother pregnant, or one who is pregnant, one who gives birth. Uh, matrix is used to speak of the womb. And so it speaks of any context, whether it's culture or, 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 or physical or anything in the world, in which something is formed and born. That is a matrix. That's where we get it. The matrix. The matrix of a movement. We could say is the surrounding circumstances in which the movement was born. America, born in the matrix of a revolution. You know, that's how it's spoken of. Now, who is your father? Your heavenly father is God. God is the father, the life giver, the source of your life, of your salvation. Who is the father of the church? God is the father. He's the one who gave life to the church, or to, I say the word church, it's not the best word in the, in the Bible, it's ekklesia, which means the gathered ones, and in Hebrew it's kehila. The Bible speaks of the word of God as a seed that God sows into the world and brings forth life. He's the father. Our faith is not natural. Our faith is supernatural. The world didn't come up with it, and the world can't end it. Man didn't come up with it. Cancel culture cannot end it. They can persecute it, but they can't end it. No one sat around and said, you know what, let's start this movement. Never happened. In fact, it wouldn't make any sense because you could, the gospel doesn't make any sense to the natural man. You could never come up with it. Nobody would ever come up with it except God. God is the father of our faith. It belongs to him. God is the father, your father, the father of salvation, father of the faith, father of the word, father of the church. But that begs the question, if God is the father, is there a mother? Does the church have a mother? Now we're not talking about God. There's only one God. Does salvation have a mother? Does our faith have a mother? The, there are those, uh, first of all, I, I'm not even, I don't want to even go here. There are apostate denominations which call God father mother. That's not so. God is called father. Of course, he's above all this, but for many reasons. But, but is there a mother to salvation. Well, there are some denominations, older denominations, which speak of a mother. They speak of the mother being Mary. The problem with that, among other things, is that the mention of Mary in the Bible, she is blessed among women, but it's very small. The Bible doesn't mention her much. It's very right. So something, in one of the, the rules of Scripture or the rules of faith is that if you or anyone or any uh, movement is emphasizing something so strong, so much, and the Bible doesn't, watch out for that, okay? It's got to have the same emphasis as the Bible. Mary is shown to be another believer. She's a sister in the Lord, and she was the mother physically of Yeshua, Messiah. Those who advocate, though, the, the view that she's the mother point to Revelation 12, which is Revelation 12, the woman and the dragon. It says this, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And she was pregnant and she cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. Okay, then it says in verse 5, and she gave birth to a son, a male, who was going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, so who is, who is the son? Clearly it's Messiah. Messiah will reign the, the nations with a rod of iron. That's Isaiah prophesying. Clearly Messiah. So is the woman Mary. Well, you we could argue that for a moment, but let's go on. The son is caught up to God and his throne. That's the ascension. Verse 6. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that she would be nourished there for 1260 days. 
Messiah is a caught up and the woman flees into the wilderness to be nourished for three and a half years. Messiah ascends. Mary, did Mary ever fly? Did she flee into the wilderness? No, there's no record of that. Did she escape the fury of the enemy in the wilderness for three and a half years? No. Three and a half years, I'm sure you're on to this, is linked to the tribulation period, half of the seven years. This is about the end times here. Revelation, end times. Mary is not alive anymore on earth. Mary lived and died. She's clearly not on earth, no matter what the doctrine is. So it can't be her. And when the dragon, verse 13, saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Now the dragon is clearly the enemy, Satan. Thrown down to the earth, persecutes the woman who gave birth to the man. When was Mary persecuted by the dragon, specifically as Mary? We don't know that. It can't be Mary. This is again the end times. Verse 14. But two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman so she could fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for a time, times, and half a time. That's year, two years, half a year, three and a half years again away from the presence of the serpent. And the serpent hurled water like a river out of his mouth after the woman so he might cause her to be swept away with a flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon had hurled out of his mouth. Two wings, a great eagle. Three and a half years again, did this ever happen to Mary? No, it can't be Mary. And again, this is end time. So it has to be someone, has to be one who gives birth to the Messiah, but is there in the end times. Well, the clues are there at the very beginning of this chapter. Look at verse 1. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, on her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, some used to say that this Mary, or some say, Mary is the queen of heaven, but that's not a good term. The problem is that the Bible uses the term queen of heaven in a very negative uh, thing about a false goddess in, in, in the prophets, a pagan goddess. But what is it? Who is it that is clothed with the sun and the moon and a crown of 12 stars? If you look, the answer is in Genesis 37. It's in the dream of Joseph. It says this. Now he still had another dream, verse 9. And he related to it, he related to his brothers, and he said, he related to his brothers and said, Behold, I have had another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. Okay. Sun and moon, eleven stars. Well, who was Joseph? He's the twelfth star. And so you've got twelve stars, the twelve sons of Israel, Sun and moon, the father and the mother, and the, it's the family of Israel. It's the father, is the father is Jacob, the mother is Rachel, and then you have the, or you could have, you have the 12 sons of Israel, one of which is being, is Joseph, that's why it's 11, because they're bowing down to him. It's a picture of what's going to happen at the end. From the 12 sons come the 12 tribes of Israel. Who is the woman clothed with the sun and the moon, the 12 stars? The woman is Israel. Israel. Who gave birth to Messiah? Mary, yes, but as Mary was part of Israel, gave birth. Israel gave birth. Mary is part, but not the whole. Who gave birth to Messiah and who will still be there in the end times? Only Israel. The only one, the only, the only one, if I say one, who gave birth to the Messiah and will be there in the end times is clearly Israel. And the Bible speaks that Israel will be persecuted at the end and by the enemy. Whom does the dragon especially persecute more than anybody? The Jewish people and then believers as well. Who has he attacked for trying to wipe out for since they existed? The Jewish people. Who will be attacked in the end times? Israel and Israel the people of God as well, who believe in Messiah. Who will be saved by God in the end times through the tribulation period? Israel and the people of God. So there's only one person, one entity that this could be, and that must be Israel who gave birth to Messiah, but is there at the end times fleeing from the enemy. The enemy tries to destroy her. Who is the father of Messiah? God is. Does Messiah have a mother? Yes, Miriam, Mary but Israel as well. He's a child of Israel. And the woman who will be in the last days again only can be Israel. Each of you has a mother and father or has had a mother and father. Half of your physical being just about is from your mother and about half is from your father. You are a combination. You are the joining of the two. 
If your father was Irish and your mother was Spanish, you're half Irish and half Spanish, in the, according to the flesh. Messiah, in his essence, his deity, his spirit, is of the Father forever, from, from eternity past. Messiah is, in his deity, of the Father. But Messiah, in his humanity, is of Israel. He's Jewish. And he's man. He's both God, from the Father, and man, born of Israel. His spirit of the Father, his flesh and blood of Israel. He had to be, or he couldn't be the Messiah. Had to be born of David. Born of Abraham, born of David. His, so his deity is from God. His humanity is from Israel. He is Jewish. I know around here I'm preaching to the choir. This is not a controversial thing, but in many places it is. He's Jewish, spoke Hebrew Aramaic, born in the Middle East, Middle Eastern culture, Middle Eastern history. His humanity is Jewish. All right. He's, he's just like we are. Our father and mother, he is his father spiritually, but flesh and blood, born of Mary, born of Israel, born of man. What about the church? The church is born of Messiah, is born through Messiah. And so when they say the, the, the church, the Messiah is born of God the Father, the church is born of God the Father, Messiah is born of Israel, the church is born of Israel. The mother of the church is Israel. The womb of the church. Where was Israel? Where was the church born? In Israel. Was that an accident? No, because the, the mother, they even called the first church the mother church, the Jewish Jerusalem church. The mother gives birth. It's God's life, all God. But God's life comes into the world, to, into, is received and then gives birth. How did, you know, how did, you know, God sent his son into the world. God sent his life into the world, his seed into the world. Israel would bear the fruit of God. How does God speak of Israel? Very often he speaks of her as his beloved, as his wife. Sometimes his son, but many times his wife. I made a covenant with her. I, as in marriage, he says, I was a husband to her. What does it say? Your husband is your maker, he says to Israel. So a man and woman come together in marriage. What did he have with Israel? He made a covenant, a marriage. What's the covenant? It's a marriage. The marriage is a covenant. The covenant is a marriage. It was a marriage. He was married to Israel. He said it. You broke my covenant. He said, I'm going to make a new one. But if God met, you know, if, if a man and woman come together in marriage, often, it's not always, but generally, a child is born of joining both of them. So if God is married to Israel, it would not be a childless marriage. There would have to be something born out of it. A mother receives life physically from the father and then bears life. So Israel was to receive life from God and then bear life to the world. God, this is going to, God, <laughs> all right, God gave his life to Israel with his word, his seed, his revelation, his spirit, his life. Israel bore fruit. Israel was the, the, bearing the fruit. The Bible is the fruit of God giving his life to Israel. And he bore this fruit to you. This is part of the fruit of Israel. It's all the life is God, but it was born through Israel. And also bore the Psalms, the prophets, the writings, the faith. Ultimately, what's the ultimate of God in Israel? Ultimate is the Messiah. Israel bore the Messiah. And as we said, the life that is born of a father and mother bears both attributes, the flesh and the spirit of Messiah. The center of Israel is what? Is Jerusalem. The center of place is Jerusalem. What does Paul say? He says, Jerusalem is your mother. Your children of Jerusalem. In Revelation, it says, the dragon makes war with a woman and her seed. So the dragon, it says, enraged with a woman, went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimonies of Yeshua. The rest of her children, who is that? The re it says, those who keep the commandments of God who are of Jesus, who hold to the testimony of Messiah. The, because it's not only the, the ultimate thing, is the church was born of her. Where did the church begin? Not Rome, not Geneva, not New York, not Tulsa. In Israel, Jerusalem. That's not a coincidence. 
It's no more coincidence that you were born through your mother, from your mother. The church begins in Israel because Israel is the matrix of the church. It began there, was conceived there, born there, in the womb of Israel. The center of Israel is Jerusalem. The womb of Israel, in fact, it was a tomb where that became a womb from which we were born from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the matrix of the church. The church began there. Not an accident that all the first believers were Jewish. Not a coincidence. It's intrinsic because the church is the mother, is be, is the, or has a Jewish mother, rather. The church was born in a Jewish land, a Jewish culture, just like Messiah was. Jewish worship, Jewish, Jewish custom, Jewish way of thinking. The Bible comes out of that. It has a Jewish... So you want to understand it, you've got to understand that. From it was born, a mother is the one who nourishes a child. And from her body, the child is nourished. Well, who nourished the church in its infancy? The life was from God, but the milk was from Israel. It was the first Jewish believers who nourished the church. I mean, Paul, think up, think, I mean, first of all, they were nourished from the scriptures of Israel. They were nourished from the Psalms and the prophets and the faith of Israel. And what is of the mother is given to the child. So the church is born as a Hebrew-Aramaic-speaking baby. When the first church in, in, in Jerusalem, they were speaking Hebrew, basically, Hebrew-Aramaic. A child is born. So from Jerusalem comes the church. That's its natural, its natural home is Jerusalem more than any other place. That's where it began, and that's where it's coming to its destiny. Your mother is the one who, who was supposed to have loved you gently cared for you. Your mother's the one who nurtured you, nourished you, held you. When you think of those, you look, read the, read the epistles and you, and you see these Jewish apostles, they're nourishing, they're nurturing the newborn church. J Paul, Peter, John, who cared? The, 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 the gospels themselves, they cared for them. And to this day, the church is nourished by what they did. There's a reason for that. To this day, through the Bible, the writings of these. A mother hearkens to a baby's need. You read the letters of Paul, and it's like he's like a mother to these people. And he says that he basically talks like that. Who, who, who loses sleep? He loses sleep over the newborn church. A mother who corrects, a mother who worries, a mother, you read Paul, a mother who comforts her child. A baby is born in its mother's house, so the church is born in the house of Israel, receives the blessings of that house. The birth of a child is often traumatic for a mother. Well, the birth of the church was traumatic for Israel in the beginning. The birth of a child is supposed to be a joy to the mother. The church was born to Israel and to the world. The child is a fulfillment of what the, what the mother is longing for. So the church is actually supposed to be a fulfillment of what Israel is longing for, except Israel missed it. Most of Israel missed it. They don't realize that the, church, the true church is actually the fulfillment of everything that they were born for. To be a light to the world. To bring salvation to the ends of the earth. What, what, was it, what did God say to Abraham? In your seed all the nations, all the Gentiles shall be blessed. That's why the Jewish people exist for the Gentiles. As a mother rejoices in her child, one day Israel is going to recognize that the church is her, is from her and will rejoice in that day. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.